All right, guys, we're back out in the garage today working on this Ford Pinto that my buddy recently just bought. It's pretty much a purpose-built drag car, and it's got a bunch of roll cage in it already. And this is what he wants me to work on. There's a big gap in here between the A-pillar and this bar. I'm pretty tall, but when I sit in the driver's seat on this thing, I can actually see out the windshield over the top of the windshield bar. Probably not super safe. So he basically wants me to raise everything up and redo this part of the cage. I'm going to cut this right here at the main hoop and grind everything back flush. And then down here I'm going to cut it somewhere above this bar but below this bend. We're going to sleeve it, drill it, and do a rosette weld. So we're going to see if we can make this thing a little safer and look better. Because come on, it's 90% about how it looks. All right, so we got this all cleaned back over here, except for this little spot. Couldn't quite get in there with the flap disc on the grinder, so we'll have to get out the Dremel. I got this side marked right where I want to cut it. You can just use a piece of cardboard or something with one straight edge and wrap it around. Here's my sleeve I'm going to use. It's a piece of inch and three-eighths diameter quarter wall DOM tube. All right, so here's my sketch for the halo bar. This is going to connect the main hoop and go up by the windshield. So basically I went inside the car and took some measurements to figure out basically how big this thing's got to be and where it's going to land. Each of these legs is going to land on the main hoop. And uh, once you get your measurements taken, you can basically start in the center and then figure out how far out you have to go to the start of each of your bends. And then make sure you have enough material that you can just trim some off the ends and notch it and you'll be good. So I'm bending on a six inch center line radius and this bender uses 0 0.104 inches per degree and that's the cost of materials they call it so basically the only reason you need to add all this up is if you want to be fairly close with the amount of material that you need to cut off to make this bar otherwise you could just sort of like fold a tape measure around and just make sure you give yourself some leeway at the end which i've done that before too and basically the cost of materials formula lets us know that we're going to use 9.36 inches on each of these 90 degree bends. So what I did was I came up here and measured everything out. So I already made my cut here. This is going to be my tube. Measure to the center and then work your way out like I said. So I'm using a Rogue Fab bender and this is the style of clamp block that they use. So I have it measured here where I want my bend to start. And then sometimes I'll label this too with an arrow. Say bend is going to be over here, right? But it starts here. And then for this bender, you're going to have a six inch offset from the clamp block to where the bend starts. So I have that measured out here. That's where the clamp block is going to start. And then I even wrote on here so I don't mess this up. Front of bender will be over here in this area. Now I've done this before too where I'll put this clamp block 
maybe line up this edge, which would be the wrong edge. Or I know I want my bend to start here, so I measure six inches the wrong way, which I almost did here. So if you're ever kind of struggling to figure out how this thing's gonna go in the bender, what you can do is you can take a cheater. This is just a 90 degree cheater that I made. And right where the bend starts, you can make a, a mark or you can take a grinder and cut a notch like that. And that way you can put a tape measure in there real easy. And I have this cut off six inches from the start of the bend. So that way you know that's where the clamp block is gonna be here. The bend is gonna start here. And then this cheater gives you an idea of how it's gonna look, right? So you can hold this up to stuff inside the car and then use these then starts to measure things inside the car. But anyways, if you're having trouble getting this thing oriented or figuring out which side the clamp block is gonna be or which side the bend is gonna be on from the start, what I usually do is I'll just take, take one of these cheaters and just kind of hold it up there and just imagine how it would go in the bender. Go, okay, so the bend's gonna start here. Clamp block's gonna be here. So that means the bend's gonna be on this side or if you're still struggling you can come over to the machine hold it up and just imagine okay the clamp block goes in here bends that way and just take your time with this stuff if you get in a hurry and put a bend in the wrong place you can't unbend it so you're gonna waste about seven feet of tube so I got this thing all marked up so we'll put it in the bender and let it rip For some reason, my clamp blocks keep slipping when I start the bend. And I kept stopping and tightening the bolts way down, like to the point where I was worried I was gonna strip out the aluminum to uh, keep them from sliding. Maybe I was doing something wrong here, but usually you don't have to tighten them down that much. This is the Rogue Fab Versa notcher. Seems to be working pretty well. Anytime that you're notching on an angle with these regular shallow hole saws, you're gonna have to stop and use a grinder to cut away that material and uh, get it out of the way so that you can keep going.
This whole cage is just mild steel. So this isn't really necessary, but I felt like TIG welding this part just for some practice. All right, so as you can see, movie magic has occurred and the roof bars are higher. You can't sit there in the driver's seat and look over the top of the windshield bar anymore. Let me bring you guys in here, take you for a tour. So we still got to figure out something to do with this switch panel. They just had it welded right to the windshield bar like this before. So he actually had to, my buddy actually had to grind this off of the old one. So we want to make it removable, whatever it is, but I don't know. I think something other than just this flat panel would be cool if it was totally boxed in or whatever up higher. So it's not in your view. Side note, look at this shifter guys. Isn't that thing sweet? Kind of have a thing for shifters. I think it's pretty cool. Also, check out the tin work in here. Pretty cool brushed aluminum look on these panels. Kind of old school, but I kind of like it too. You must have just taken a wire brush or something and just went along by hand and just made this brushed pattern. Here's some of the tin work in the back. They got this thing set up to be a little bit of a big tire car. It's got a four link underneath and lots of room for big tires. All right, as you can see, we ended up cutting this A pillar right here and then just put that sleeve in here. Pretty thick piece of quarter wall DOM. And then uh, drilled, did a couple rosettes. And that should pass tech. All it says in the NHRA rule book is that you have to show visible reinforcement, i.e. sleeve and rosette. So I don't know how they check that. I guess a guy could just weld, you could just fake it and drill these holes and then weld them back over and not sleeve anything. But maybe they have a way of checking the thickness to see if there's actually something underneath there. I also say that anywhere that you can't practically weld all the way around the tube, you can substitute up to 25% of the weld for gussets on each side. And they specify the size. I think they gotta be like inch and three quarter leg on each side with like a eighth inch thickness. And then they even specify if you have holes, you can have three holes and they can only be a certain size and all that. So I ended up just making these out of some three sixteenths, I think. And, uh, just left them solid. So that should be good to pass for their gusset rules. And then those up there are some store-bought ones with the three holes. But the angles down here didn't really work out for those. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I think my buddy's gonna like it. And I promise we'll get to the bumper build next time. Thanks guys, see ya.